on economic nationalism and economic warfare. This is what I'm going to say. The Chinese Communist Party would never admit it. China is a national communist state. What does this mean? It means that the Chinese state has not in terms of nationalization in you know in the likes of the socialist uprisings but they have a nationalized capitalist economy china is never going to be a socialist country they call themselves a socialist country no i you know I, I i frankly i don't care if this gets me you know debarred but no it's never going to happen because you want to know why because i actually know this sounds very braggadocio but I know capitalism. I read the advanced writings of Marx. Everything. Capitalism, socialism, uh, communism, which is... Comp it's Communism is undesirable in theory, unworkable in practice. And in a catch-22, communism is not a threat because it can't even be realized. Sure, you can have jackboot authoritarianism. Authoritarianism. You can have jackboot totalitarianism but that's not communism so in terms of the catch-22 is that because communism can't even be realized it's not a practical or theoretical threat uh jackboot authoritarianism that's not communism so but but the, this, this i don't want to turn it into an a kid argument china is a national capitalist country and i approve of that element uh basically it took it she takes what i see as the anti-inherently anti-patriotic anti-nationalist elements of capitalism she nationalizes the capitalists who would otherwise have no allegiance to china let me tell you this if you're a chinese capitalist without the without the communist party state apparatus they would just do the same things the american capitalists do so so when the, when trump maga says why are we getting screwed over no, China didn't screw you over. Jobs going to Guatemala, jobs going to China, jobs going to China, Mexico, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia. Jobs, it's not all going to China. Some are going to communist, so-called communist Vietnam. Nominally socialist Vietnam. A bunch of nominal, nominal socialists. This is all driven by capitalism, folks. So if, if you're a leftist in America, if you're a MAGA, trump supporter no vietnam china aren't stealing your jobs this is the whole that's what capitalism is effect that's what it's intended to be if you don't like it you have a beef with capitalism you might you might disagree right now you're gonna know i'm right so i think what the ultimate economic nationalism of, of President Trump and Bannon, that would be a form of national capitalism taking a plate, play, play, taking a page right out of China. Um, no, is China going to ever realize socialism? It's not because do you understand. Let let me break down what socialism is. Socialism is the collective ownership of the means of production. Do you see any Chinese workers having co-equal shares in state industries, in private industries? Are they all masters of industry where each laborer is the co-equal stakeholder of each other laborer, where they get the full uh, profits back from their labor? There are Taiwanese uh, companies making you know, products in China. No, China is never going to be socialist. What they have, what the Communist Party of China has accomplished, they will never admit it. I don't care if they disbar me for, for this, but they have realized something that makes capitalism work and that's called basically they have forced their capitalists to, instead of being the anti-national capitalists of the western no i mean instead of being the anti-nationals of traditional capitalism they have imposed a national security law they have imposed patriotic requirements they are forcing their capitalists to be nationals, to be nationalists, to be patriots, as opposed to anti-nationals. If the Chinese Communist Party follows the American, the Bill Clinton version, the Chinese capitalists, as soon as they can, they will go off 
to incorporate, for example, wherever, Singapore, uh, Latin America, Africa, uh, they will go off and incorporate maybe in America. Oh, they, they, they'll, be, they'll be nominally Chinese. They will be nominally Chinese companies. Maybe they'll sell their, their stuff back to the Chinese people. But they're going to pull the same anti-nationalist nonsense that the, of the Western anti-national capitalists. So in terms of the, of the one-party state, forcing the Chinese capitalist to be a citizen of China This is the correct patriotism. No, so I don't call for the abolition of capitalism, but I believe in the nationalization of capitalism, this form of nationalized capitalism, this form of this capitalism that is nationalized, which is a patriotic or national form of capitalism, that 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 mitigates mitigates militates against the anti-national elements of capitalism and forces it to be patriots to serve the country rather than go off and incorporate in latin america return profits to your american canadian ecuadorian all these different shareholders from around the world the communist the chinese the Chinese, when the Chinese Communist Party forces the Chinese capitalists to be lovers of the nation, of the Chinese nation, I clap for the Communist Party. To that extent, I'm a communist. But, a, but more so, a national capitalist, to be correct. The phenomenal success of President Donald Trump is a testament to history. Why do international socialists these communist party movements all flutter and fail and flounder. It's a testament to the need of human nature. My need, your need, our needs. What the eggheads, academics like Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels got wrong is people love their own nations first. So this this goes back to the era of Karl Marx to the to the present Donald Trump success. So basically, if the extreme left Democrats in the America are wondering, wait, this doesn't add up. We've been arguing about outsourcing the race to the bottom, all the jobs going to China. How come we're so unpopular? Because you're perceived as anti-nationals. So Bernie Sanders and Trump, they're arguing for the same thing, bringing, retooling America, bringing the manufacturing jobs back. Why aren't the pro-labor uh, Democrats, why aren't they popular? Well, first of all, they're perceived as weak on crime, soft on crime. They're not only perceived as soft on crime, they're perceived as one of the root causes in terms of the policies that are enabling crime, anarchy, and what the conservatives perceive as unmitigated open borders, whether true or false. I think there is a big problem at the border. So why is Trump popular? Because he speaks to the working man and he's a nationalist. He's not an... So basically, there's this... There's this egghead argument. Whoa, why don't Americans support the, the Democrats when they're pro-labor, when they're the actual ones uh, fighting for the working man as opposed to this Republican Party that caters to big elites, uh, you know, basically the elites. Who are the elites perceived to be? Uh, you know, George Bush. But the Democrats, they have their capitalist elites. They have, you know, Bill Clinton. Um, but what Trump understood, what Trump speaks to is the fact that socialism and communism doesn't work. Internationalism doesn't work. If you nationalize capitalism, 
if you nationalize capitalism, that's not what real capitalism is. But yes, you can have a modified form of capitalism. So where when Trump forces, if, I'm saying if Trump forces companies to bring the jobs back, bring the factories back, to retool, retool the manufacturing base, um, you know, or, or face consequences, there is some economic power he can weld, but, you know, what's to stop, I don't know what is to stop a corporation from saying, um, basically, if he creates this incentive, you know what, if you, if you manufacture elsewhere, we'll, we'll raise the tariffs like hell, we'll, you know, we'll, you know, we'll penalize you. What's to stop an American company, uh, you know, a global multinational from incorporating, say, just in a different country? So, so capitalism is an international thing. It doesn't, there are companies that are perceived as American, but they're incorporated. Their citizenship is not American, so to speak. Um, capitalism has no national allegiance. Um, one way to do it is do what China does, strong arm during the streets. Basically, the party state imposes national security laws upon the private industry. You do what the country and the party tells you to do. Uh, in my opinion, you know, if Trump imposes, you know, restrictions on U.S. companies, uh, basically, if he nationalizes capitalism, he is making... He's not only making America great, he's making America into China. That's right. Uh, because the way China does it, companies are at the... Companies are not... Capitalists are not these superiors. The party and the state commands the capitalists rather than the other way around. So the... So in terms of China bullying the capitalists, in terms of the Communist Party bullying the capitalists, what do, what do I say to this type of bullying? This is, this is high-level bullying. I'm not endorsing cyber bullying. But in terms of this high-level political bullying, I approve of the party.